north of Brisbane two weeks ago. A machine malfunctioned and the chemical was released into drinking supplies at 20 times the normal standard. Queensland Health has been quick to play down any safety concerns, but anti-fluoride campaigners are horrified. Here's state political reporter Jessica Van Vonderen. Fluoride started flowing into southeast Queensland's water supplies in December. Five months later, there's been a problem. Last night at approximately 7pm, I was advised that there had been a small misfunction malfunction at the North Pine Water Treatment Plant. It happened a fortnight ago during a routine maintenance shutdown. 300,000 litres of water with elevated fluoride levels was released into pipelines over a three-hour period. The recommended maximum concentration is one and a half milligrams per litre. On that day, it was 20 times higher. We're investigating the technical reasons for why this happened. Uh, it's very unusual for it to happen and it's completely unprecedented in our, in our understanding. The water may have reached up to 4,000 homes in the northern suburbs of Brendale and Warner, but Queensland Health is reassuring residents there was next to no risk. If anyone, I don't believe anyone has, but if anyone was to have an adverse result to it, the symptoms that they would show would be those of very mild gastroenteritis. The malfunction took 12 days to discover. That's how long the testing process takes. Now this is what Dr Phyllis Mullinex had to say to Paul Connett in an interview about what fluoride does to the brain. She says here that the study basically found three things. First of all, that if you put sodium fluoride in the drinking water of young animals and with time, meaning a period of weeks in a rat's lifetime, they would develop changes in their behavioural patterns and that pattern change was hypoactivity pattern. Talking about the scientific study that was published by Dr Mullinex, she said that her paper concerning the neurotoxicity of sodium fluoride in rats was published in Neurotoxicology and Teratology Journal, and that's a peer-reviewed journal, and it was published in 1995. So that tells you what she did on a scientific level concerning fluoride. Dr. Janet Young, you're the Chief Health Officer for the Queensland Government. You advise the Premier. You're the person that said that fluoride was safe. You're a doctor, and yet you can go in and do the same research that we can and you will find that there's 32,000 doctors who say that fluoride is not safe. And on this report you can see that scientific studies and papers published to prove that fluoride causes damage to the brains of infants. When are you going to warn the mothers that have babies over in the North Brisbane area? When are you going to warn them that not only is fluoride with the accepted dose in it not safe for babies, but we're talking about fluoride that is now 25 to 30 times over the dose. Are you going to warn the mothers that they should make sure that they should not use the water for their babies? Because that fluoride overdose is still in the, tank, in, in the water supply. You won't get it out. How are you going to get it out? Are you going to stop putting fluoride in there for six months to make up for it? Are you going to maybe stop putting fluoride in there for one more year to make up for it because there's already enough in the pipeline to last them for five years. Now what are you going to do about it? And you are the person responsible for the mothers of Queensland and their health? Our Queensland health advisor, Dr Janet Young, she says that there's nothing to worry about. Well, dentists even overseas on June 19, 2008, the American Dental Association updated its website indicating that fluoride is a concern to all kidney patients, not just to those on dialysis. And yet our Dr. Janet Young said that no harm will be done when it wasn't 20 times more, it was 30 times more than what is allowed. Furthermore, the National Research Council's advice, it says at least three National Research Council panel members concluded that water fluoride levels should be close to zero, not only to protect kidney patients, but also thyroid patients and 
infants. Now our Dr. Janet Young says that um, it won't do any harm. 20, 30 times more fluoride in the water. And it's not just going to affect 3,000 people, it's more like 10 to 15,000 people. Now how many babies are in that area? Because a baby under the age of two should not have any fluoride in their drinking water or in the water that the mother mixes their, uh, their food up in. And yet, here is a statement also concerning the National Kidney Foundation, the NKF. It withdrew its fluoridation endorsement in October 2007, which they made a public in a fluoride paper dated the 15th, April 15, 2008, with advice that individuals with chronic kidney disease should be notified of the potential risk of fluoride exposure. Anna Bly, you are the Premier of Queensland, Australia, and you're the person who said that we were going to have fluoride, whether we liked it or not. But you're also the person, four years ago, you voted against it. You are the person that said no to fluoride. But then the Agenda 21 came into view. And then the New World Order gave you some instructions. And here you are, demanding that everybody drink fluoride, whether we like it or not. 93% and 87% of the poll through the newspapers in Queensland, the public said no, they did not want fluoride. Did that make any dint on your decision? No. You gave it to them whether they liked it or not. The government of Belgium, it says it's not the minister who just came up with the idea, that is the banning fluoride, but the action was advised by the Belgium High Committee of Health, as stated in the interview. You can see here an official statement, but there's one thing also to realise. They dumped it here on Queensland. We are importing it now to put into the people here for them to drink it here in this Queensland, Australia and yet the people overseas will not drink it in their water. Premier Bly, you were acting under an instruction from the Agenda 21 and the New World Order to give us recycled sewage. Now could you imagine if there had been three or four hours of recycled sewage go into the water before your authorities found out that there had been an accident? That is something you don't realise that you'll never get it out of the water. It's in the pipelines. It's already in everybody's home. Could you imagine with something like 10, 15,000 homes, four people per home, 60,000 people were drinking recycled sewage for 12 days before the authorities found out that it was in their water supply? And then there's one more question. What would you have done to get it out of the water supply? It would have been in there forever and it would have flowed through also into the catchment areas. So you see, when Professor Collinon and Professor Troy told you that it was not safe to put recycled sewage into people's drinking water, they were right. The Deputy Premier of Queensland, Australia, the Hon Paul Lucas. So we ask you when, as the Minister for Health, you're going to warn the mothers not to use the fluoridated water for their babies, as it has been proven scientifically that it damages the brain. And when are you going to warn the people that have got thyroid and kidney problems not to use fluoridated water. The same as ADA in Canada, the ADA in USA, they warn the people. When are you going to take the responsibility here and warn the people? Are you going to continue to go down the track of following the Agenda 21, the New World Order instructions from USA? Why don't you just take the responsibility that we gave you and rule the people of Queensland our way? the Australian way. We don't need to follow Agenda 21 and we don't like to follow the New World Order. We want you to follow the Queensland way and look after us an Australian way and make sure as a Minister of Health. You know, when you had the Professor Collin on and you had Professor Choi warn not to use recycled sewage water because it would not be safe. Now, you've got an example where it took you 14 days to warn the public that not 20, it's more like 30 times the amount of fluoride poison went into the water. Why did you take so long to warn the people? Could you imagine what it had been like if that was 14 days of sewage go into the water before you found out 
that it had gone into the water, how many people would have been affected? 